Hi, uh, my name is Mari Shinohara, and I'm an assistant professor at Duke University School of Medicine. Uh, I started to have interest in doing MS research because uh, as a uh, basic immunologist, I have been working on T cells and then other uh, immune cells. And uh, uh, for me, uh, well, understanding what is going on is a very important question. But at the same time, I really wanted to uh, have something which can relate to uh, somebody's life. For example, um, if we do in basic research, which may sound something not directly related to people's life, uh, have even a tiny little bit of possibility to change somebody's life, it would be really a great thing, I thought. So initially, I was in very, very basic research field, which is nothing to do with uh, diseases. But uh, at certain time, I started to work on, as I said, T-cells, dendritic cells, macrophages. And then I thought that it would be really great if I can relate to some kind of disease. And then I found that MS is something I could use my expertise. So I got into MS research when I, I was a postdoc. And then I have been continuing MS research ever since. When I was a postdoc, before I came to Duke, I have been working on uh, why uh, interferon beta therapy works to treat MS patients. And then uh, at that time, uh, the question is, uh, question was how interferon beta works. Um, and then we had a part of the answer, uh, interferon beta works through the cells, uh, cell types called dendritic cells, and then suppresses inflammation of MS. Um, and then after I came here, uh, we started to ask another question, which is why some patients do not respond to uh, interferon beta therapy? Because uh, I heard that it's a, a serious uh, issue that some people have to go through interferon beta therapy, and although they have to go through all the side effects, um, some people uh, eventually only figure out that uh, the therapy uh, really didn't work for them. So. Uh, I believe that understanding why uh, it doesn't work and why it works for some people, those are very important uh, questions to uh, hopefully uh, figuring out in future uh, to uh, make a difference. So we started work on that and then uh, recently uh, we found that there is a two, there are two different type of, types of information going on in EAE, that is the uh, animal model of MS. Uh, and then uh, one kind of EAE, interferon beta therapy works perfectly, but another uh, type of EAE, interferon beta therapy doesn't work at all. And we found this mechanism. So at this point, we are only looking at EAE, which is a mouse model again, but eventually uh, we'd like to know whether the same uh, hypothesis can be applied to humans. Uh, which is uh, MS patients, and if it is a case, uh, it may be possible to uh, predict who can uh, be respond, uh, who can respond to the interferon beta therapy, and who won't. And I think it would be great if we could uh, understand that, or if we could predict that, so that uh, patients will know whether this therapy is good for them, or if it doesn't work, maybe they can uh, try different type of approach. So the next step is uh, we really want to know uh, what we found in uh, mouse model also can be applied to humans. So now we started to work with clinicians, so they have uh, uh, samples from patients. So we are going to analyze the patients and then see whether uh, our hypothesis can be applied. And as I said before, if uh, it works uh, as we thought, uh, we can probably develop uh, the prediction uh, assay to tell whether this therapy is for you, particularly in this case, interferon beta therapy is for you or not. Yeah, MS is really complicated and serious disease, so it is very hard to imagine how much of impact uh, people get when uh, they are diagnosed as uh, MS patients. So here, uh, 
we are not physicians, so we cannot uh, see patients, but uh, we are also, you know, really hoping that we can do something here to uh, um, hopefully uh, provide um, the better therapy. So we're working uh, day and night. <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, keep our hope and then uh, yeah, we are here and uh, really, you know, hoping to do something uh, we can do best in uh, this field. In particular, in the immunology field, the last decade is a really uh, very uh, many uh, important advancements happened. For example, uh, well, T cells are obviously important uh, cells for uh, uh, development of illness and uh, people found that for example new subtype of T cells, TH17 cells we call it and also there is another type of T cells which is a good guy, a good guy and uh, these new T cells subset can also suppress, we call them uh, regulatory T cells and uh, this field is really expanding and also another important thing is that uh, innate immunity so innate immunity is considered to be only important for fighting against uh, microbial infections that was more than 10 or 15 years ago but uh, these days we started to understand that this innate immunity uh, it, which used to be uh, considered only important for infections are having so much impact on MS and actually uh, as I just told uh, um, Interferon Beta uh, works on innate immune cells and then really uh, sometimes uh, in a good case of a scenario suppresses EAE and sometimes not so uh, now we started to understand that innate immunity is uh, really playing a, a key role in the uh, mechanism of MS development. So um, I think these are uh, very important field to um, go uh, to, to pursue uh, to better understand uh, what is going on in the MS development and also uh, to try to understand uh, or try to develop better therapy. We really need to understand what is going on.